come on, right? Don't be a spoil sport in the manger, eh? I'm going to go. I'm going whether you go or not. Good. I'll hire a band to see you off. Well, why won't you come with us? You can enjoy it more when there's two of you doing it. Oh, well, plenty of things in life that are better for someone else joining in, eh, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, travelling together is like company, isn't it? I mean, sort of enhances the journey. You can bolster each other up when spirits are at a low ebb when there's two of you. Yeah, and one can love the other's rucksack when there's two of you, Steve. Read the maps, look up timetables, bail his brother out of Continental Nick, and generally wag his tail like a five-star dog's body. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. When there's two of you, it's can carrying for Brian and hassle-free travel for Steve. God, and I thought you had a sense of adventure. I also have a strong sense of foreboding and doom. Probably afraid to cross the channel in case you're sick. <laughs> One quick hoist in the main brace and his lime green brain, the human mango, chucking his chutney down the funnel. <laughs> no, Steve, I can't even be provoked by allegations of cowardice. Not even a whole duvet full of white feathers would provoke me to venture abroad with an international embarrassment like you. I'll go on my own, then. That's right, Steve, you go on your own. All hard travelling, long lonesome Steve, eh? He storms his ticket and all his best friends are motorways. I'll be there, mate. I'll be all right. South of France. Topless and that. <laughs> Topless? Hey, you're never thinking of going topless, are you, Steve? Hey, do you think the world's ready yet for the sight of your hairy little tyre valves? <laughs> hey, I wonder what it'll be like, though, Bray, up at the vineyards. Do you, do you reckon I'll have, like, sort of... like, sort of topless grape-picking? <laughs> oh, yes, undoubtedly, Steve, of course, yeah. They probably have topless train spotting in France. They might, might even have topless brain surgery. In fact, the only time women in France put a bra on is when their ears get cold. <laughs> You're a real drum down the chin, you are. Oh, oh come on, Bray. Look, look, four weeks camping on the beach, right? Then up to Bordeaux for two weeks at the Grapes. Well, made to measure arrangements, aren't they? Stand you to a coffee, fit you to a tea. Look, Steve, grape picking can be hard, exhausting work. Eight or nine hours a day, seven days a week. And you don't get rich. I want a relaxing holiday this year, not a knackering one. <laughs> it's not that bad, though, is it? I mean, you get free wine, a couple of litres a day. Even if you do work hard, at least you're legless while you're doing it. <laughs> no, Steve, I wouldn't mind going with you, but I'd probably be off somewhere with Sonia. I think she's got some holiday plans. So where's she going, then? Two weeks in the North Sea, hosing down sperm whales. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff the last cheesy clinkers in there, have you? Why? Gonna keep me company down the laundrette? No. Better go and get me passport form, you know. Fix up for me jabs for the typhoid and the cholera, malaria tablets and that. See you. Malaria in France? Hey, Steve! Yeah? Don't forget your pith helmet, will you? <laughs> should be like east meets west, sort of far-flung horizons, like intercontinental vibrations and that. I mean, it's like the ideal opportunity for us to go to India, really get our heads together and sort our heads out. Yes. Well, I am very keen to sort my head out, Sonia, as you well know, but uh, won't the fare to India be prohibitively expensive? Well, not necessarily, Brian. It is possible to go to Delhi overland, you know. Like magic bus, psychedelic sharabank over the hills and far away. Yeah, but how much does it cost? Well, the cheapest is if we go with Trans Asia Overland Nomadic Intertrek, who'll get us to India for £17.50 to take. £17.50 to India? Hey, that sounds suspiciously cheap. What's the catch? Well, you do have to rough it a little, but it's the numbers involved that make it cost effective. Why, how do you travel? As a group of 150 and a specially converted racing pigeon transporter. <laughs> that sounds a bit claustrophobic, Sonia. How long does it take? Well, it's six weeks getting there and eight weeks coming back. I think it's more uphill on the return journey. <laughs> and they do have to have more toilet stops for all the people who've contracted dysentery. <laughs> Look, Sonia, how would it be if we just had a package holiday? Eh? Maybe that would suit us better. A package holiday? Yeah, all found, you know, relaxing in the sun. In fact, you can get two weeks on the Costa del Sol for the as little... Costa del Sol? 
Do you know, sometimes you utterly traumatise me, Brian. <laughs> I thought you'd have had more integrity than the one to go gruffling it up on the Costa del Sol on some sort of fun in the sun butlins a go go basis. <laughs> I mean, I know you have these proletarian roots, but that doesn't mean you have to dig them up and show them to everybody. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I don't see how a nice couple of bourgeois months up the Kyber Pass is any more spiritually uplifting than two weeks in Spain. I mean, one's as much tourism as the other. It's a package holiday just the same. Well, we'd certainly meet more genuine people than we would travelling with Grockles and Gorms Limited. <laughs> I mean, your idea of sophistication's a pair of Polaroids or a swimming pool with a bar in it. All they want to do is enjoy themselves. <laughs> I want to enjoy myself. Well, maybe we shouldn't go anywhere together. Well, maybe that's not a bad idea. Right. 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 Could you let me out, please? <laughs> somebody about going abroad. The card on the Students' Union notice board. All oh, right, hang on. Hey, Steve, someone about your going abroad. Bloke or bird? Young lady. Hey, things you're looking up, eh? <laughs> <coughs> Hello? Yeah, about the ad, is it? Well, my name's Steve Webber, and... <laughs> Heavy breathing job. <laughs> Well, that would be your most economical way, sir, to make your way to Dover and uh, take a ferry from there. Oh, right, jeez. Oh, uh, just have a timetable, if I... Oh, of course, I'll help yourself. Yeah. Oh, uh, one thing, actually. I was wondering if you could tell me, with all your courier experience and that, about, uh, About the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, from what I've heard, you see, they haven't got any. Well, not really known, you know. And a mate at work said they have these round cast iron sheds, but they don't go down all the way, you see, and you can see your legs when you're having a... <laughs> excusing yourself, you know. Now, is it right that you've got to be a bit wary, is it? I think you'll find the facilities in France comparable to those in Britain, sir. Better in many cases. Oh, right, jeez. Oh, and one other thing. I wonder if you could tell me whereabouts I could obtain a passport <laughs> application for. You could always try the post office. Post office? Right, uh, uh, I'll be back in to see you when I'm ready to book it, so there's no need to worry about not getting your commission. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> <coughs> Yours not developed yet, then? No. <laughs> It's supposed to take a few minutes. Shouldn't be long now. Uh-huh. I believe these are the right size, aren't they? The uh, 50 by 38 millimetres, you know, as required for a passport. I'm sorry, I don't know. I imagine so. Oh, well, certainly hope so. I'm getting a new passport, you see. Yeah, uh, old one's a bit full. It's chock a block with visas and customs stamps and immigration control. I'm going abroad. Yeah, well, you'd need a passport if you were going abroad. I could see that coming in pretty useful. Yeah. You, uh, you, you like venturing to foreign climes yourself, are you? I might be. I'm applying for a job. It depends. Oh, really? Well, my work takes me abroad quite a bit as well. well what's that, then? Well, overseas work, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sort of uh, a freelance scrape consultant. Well, and that's... Uh, what I mean to say is, um, I sort of specialise in vineyard contracts, you know, and uh, exports, credits, guarantee <coughs> guarantees. <laughs> Where are you hoping to go? Well, Kuwait, 
if my application's successful, like. Oh, Kuwait. Huh? Yes, that's sort of uh, Abu Dhabi and Cairo, Saudi Arabia and that, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, you won't go far wrong there, no. Oh, them tax-free allowances and that. Um, where are you going to work? Oh, it's in a nightclub. Dancing. But you've got to send your photograph off first. Ah, oh, yeah, well, they want to see your picture first, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're doing both at once. I'll get them. No, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> You've been going topless in the booth. You're not supposed to go topless in the booth. Thank you. Going topless in the booth, eh? <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> it's not right, that isn't. Going topless in the booth. <laughs> Might have been seen by little children. <laughs> Exactly what sort of holiday had you in mind, sir? Yes. Um, I believe there are package holidays to the Mediterranean for young people in the 18 to 30 age group who are unattached and uh, out to enjoy themselves with like-minded individuals of the opposite sex with, like, uh, uninhibited beach parties and the opportunity to participate in water sporting activities. Uh, <laughs> the singles holidays. Yes, 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 I believe that is what they're called, yes. If you could just give me a, a few brochures, it is for my brother. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, here we are. Now, of course, the great advantage of these Thanks holidays... Thanks very much indeed. Um, you don't manage to have a large, plain brown envelope, do you? <laughs> Thank you. Vegetarian restaurant. Can I help you? <laughs> Sorry, I'm <can't remember. laughs> Stay with a married, single, widowed or divorced. That's single, then. Oh, they didn't catch you out on that one, then, Steve, eh? <laughs> you are much too quick for them there, eh? Right, height. What should I put down for how tall I am, Bray? How about not very? <laughs> no, in metric, they want to know how tall I am in metres. What, gas metres or electricity <laughs> metres? Go your right leg up the lamppost sometimes, aren't you? There's a conversion chart on the back. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, 1.75, right. Now, uh, Now, would you say that I had any visible distinguishing marks? Yeah. A large rubbery protuberance on top of your shoulders. <laughs> No. Particularly the children. None of them. Oh, you've been lying to me again, Steve. You've been exaggerating the scope of your achievements. Place of birth. Hospital. <laughs> Shut up, will you, Bray? I'm trying to get this done. Well, why can't you fill in the form more quietly, then? Birth certificate. Oh, Dad lost them, didn't he? Where'd you get yours from when you applied for a passport? You got a scrap of paper? Oh, yeah. Right, you write off your birth certificate, Steve, to Mr. Stork. Yes, <laughs> 23. 23. The Baby Factory, Gucci Gucci <laughs> Billers, Tidham Street, Stockholm, Scandinavia. Oh, Mr. Stork, ah, pardon me while I wet myself. <laughs> no, it's on the form. Why don't you take the trouble to read the notes for guidance? Oh, oh yeah, found it now, yeah. Oh, no! What on earth is it now? Well, it says here that the completed form's got to be signed by someone who's known you personally for two years, such as a JP, a vicar, a lawyer, a bank officer, a policeman, or MP. So what? Well, it's stupid, that is, isn't it? It's just stupid. Staff blinking form. I don't know any flipping members of parliament. <laughs> well, ask a policeman. You must know plenty of them. <laughs> Not on you can write. <laughs> but if you could... You could read, Steve. You see, it does say person of similar standing. Ask Sonia. She's a graduate, very respectable. Never had a parking ticket. She's known you two years, much to her regret. Yeah, I never thought of that, Bray. Never thought of that. It's a really laborious process getting things through to you, isn't it, Steve? 
The words have got to be practically stuffed up your ears with plungers. It was all meaningful dialogues with you, though, isn't it, Bray? I mean, perish the thought of just having a chat. Two people sitting down talking to each other like it's killing the art of conversation. I wish I'd never come to Newcastle. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hiya. What's the box on you? We sort of traveller's survival guide, like handy hints and act tips for remaining unflappable in various perilous situations. Oh, I see. Like overcoming border hassles and how to politely discourage the unwanted advances of sexually deprived nomads. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do that then? Kick him in a sacred cow? <laughs> Here, for example, it says that should you be surrounded by hostile Colombian primitives, you can easily diffuse tension by shouting humorous understatements and showing them snapshots of your domestic pets. How can you shout a humorous understatement when you can't speak the language? Well, obviously, Steve, if you can't speak the language, you'd convey your meaning through humorous under-gestures, wouldn't you? Oh, sounds like a good way of plugging in the electric chair, eh? <laughs> well, I think it's very courageous of you to go all that way on your own, Sonia. Oh, me and no, all, yeah. I'm, I'm getting windy trouser flaps just at the thought of going to France on me, Doddy. <laughs> well, it's not as dangerous as all that, Steve. It's not as if anyone's going to get abducted for the white slave trade and taken to the harem with Abdul and the eunuchs. <laughs> not in this day and age, are they? <laughs> oh, no, no. You'll be quite safe, Sonia, I'm sure. Yeah, of course you will, yeah. Mind you, I did read in Dead Men Tell No Tales. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it's got last resorts in here anyway. It says that if in danger of an assailant, you can easily extricate yourself by breaking his little finger, dislocating his knee with a sharp kick, or if all else fails, by gouging out his eyeballs. <laughs> well, that should promote understanding and goodwill amongst the various peoples of the world. I think I'll just have a bath, excuse me. Uh, Sonia, would you mind endorsing me passport application form, please? Of course not, Steve. Yeah. Oh, I'm so queasy. I don't know what it is. I just seem to get so tense these days, Steve. I'm sorry. Pitching to honestly, Steve. <laughs> Sonia. Hey, yeah. Hey, Colin. What are you doing? Hello, Bray. Didn't, uh, didn't, didn't he come in the door? Well, that's more than obvious. What have you got then? Cat fleas or St Vitus dance? <laughs> oh, no, he's going to eat it. Oh, no. No, it's, uh, it's my rucksack. Well, I gather it was either that or a gabardine sandwich. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just breaking it in, you know. Oh, breaking it in! What are you, then, the Roy Rogers of the Army surplus stores? You've taken up rucksack busting, have you? Roll up, see little Stevie Webber in his famous booking rucksack. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not getting on a ferry with a cellophane wrapping still on, am I? So everyone will know I've never been anywhere before. People breaking walking boots, I'm just breaking in my rucksack. Same difference, isn't it? What else you got here then, eh? Oh, the little wayfarer's vagabond kid. Just leave it alone, will you? Have your lotions and your potions, have you, Steve? Your two little sticks to rub together. Oh, tube of toothpaste. Tin of antiseptic ointment. Two, tin, two packets of sticking plaster. Toilet roll. <laughs> Spare toilet roll. <laughs> and oh, what a surprise! Emergency toilet roll! 
Hey, you're not planning on being stuck with something to do, are you, Steve? Eh? Yeah, well, you can't take no chances with a fool, can you? Steve, you're going to the south of France, not Marrakesh. Saint-Tropez is hardly the diarrhoea capital of the world. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I'm going somewhere, and so is Sonia, which is more than you're doing. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Where is Sonia, anyway? It was her I came to see. Oh, she was going out as I was coming in. Oh. You've no idea where? Yeah. Well, where? I've gone round to see you. <laughs> so, you're all booked up, are you, Sonia, I suppose? Yes, Brian, more or less. Just a matter of finalising details and finishing touches and that. How about you? Me too. Same here, same here. Just a matter of wrapping me trunks up in me towel. Oh. oh. Not that I specifically want to go on my own. No. I'd rather be travelling with someone else as well. It's just that I've always intended to go to India and more of working in the restaurant, you get this sense of futility, of time slipping through your fingers and... Well, I feel I've done nothing with my life. Oh, that's not true, Sonia. It is. I've wasted my degree. I'm just an educated skivvy, another one of history's female casualties. I might as well have succumbed for the housewife option and, and plumped for a two-up, two-down situation. Oh, but you're so active, Sonia, socially and politically. You're always pamphleting, campaigning, lead free petrol, friends of the earth. I mean, you've accomplished an awful lot. No, I haven't, Brian. Not really. Lollipop ladies do more for the community than me. I'm just a failure. I wanted to be a second Germain Greer. I've ended up another Doris Day. <laughs> What happened to the 60s, Brian? What happened to love and peace and all the beautiful people who were going to San Francisco? I don't know. I suppose they went there and got mugged. <laughs> Everything's changed. I don't hardly feel young anymore. What's even more depressing, I'm starting to look like my mother. <laughs> oh, come on, Sonia, it can't be as bad as that. It's just that going to India was like drowning men's straws. The final veil in the dance of the seven illusions. And now I've stripped my psyche bare and come face to face with the naked core of my inner soul. Yes. I don't want to go. <laughs> so, if you're agreeable, Steve, that will be the plan. We'd buy the camper between us, take it over on the ferry and then drive it down to the south of France. Yeah, it's fine by me, Brick. Will we get there, though? Oh, yes, I've had a good look at it, Steve. No, it's not a bad motor. It's in very good mechanical working order. And with what we earn from the great picking, plus what we resell the van for when we get home, the whole holiday should pay for itself. Hey, I'm glad you changed your mind, Bree. It'd be great, eh? Monte Carlo, the Riviera, toasting on the beach, eh? Not half, eh? We'll yeah. come back looking like coffee pots. <laughs> be buying suntan oil by the catering pack. Suntan oil. And we should be able to sample the delicacies and the specialities, Steve, like the uh, gourmet cooking and the haute cuisine. Oh, yeah, of course, the haute cuisine, yeah. And, like, like de la maison and the specialities, yeah. <laughs> yeah, might even get invited on board a yacht, eh? In parties. <laughs> Nookie on the dunes, eh? <laughs> French girls, eh, Brie? French girls. Bromide tablets, Steve, bromide tablets. <laughs> Hey, we're going on the holidays, Bree. Yeah, going on the holidays, eh, Steve? Yeah, real abroad, proper abroad, eh? Thought we'd never get away from home sometimes, but we did. We escaped. <laughs> I wonder what they'd say if they could see us now, eh? If they could see us, you and me, going abroad to France. Yeah. Well, it's not precisely you and me going to France, Steve. <laughs> How do you mean? It's more you, me and Sonia. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> nor a bad van, he says. Nor a bad van. How do they pick you up? Moan, moan, moan. Whinge, whinge, whinge. Hey, Sonia's very quiet of a sudden. Is she falling asleep in the back? No, it's the exhaust fumes. The carbon monoxide. <laughs> is she asleep or isn't she? Well, her mouth's hanging open. <laughs> hey, you got any ping-pong balls? Will you give it a <laughs> rest? Oh, look, Bray, I'm fed up with riding shotgun. Let's have a turn driving. No. I don't like your one-eyelid style of hurtling through the night. Shall I stroll in front with a red flag, then? We're going quite fast enough. You've been buying that one-star petrol again, haven't you? I'm warning you, Steve. It's amazing how they create that sense of motion by walking past with the scenery. There, Dover. Oh, Dover, eh? Twenty-five past flipping five in the morning. I've never been conscious this time of day before. Why break the inveterate habits of a lifetime now, eh? Hmm. 
Hey, should we get cracking in there? Be clambering aboard, up with the ensign and that, you know. Let Brian finish his breakfast, Steve. He has been driving nocturnally, like, all through the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cars are queuing up to get on board the ferry, aren't they, eh? No, Come no. on, first on, first off, ain't it? You drive the van on, seeing as you're so anxious about it, and we'll walk on in ten minutes. All oh, right. Hang on, hang on. We can't get on without our passports, can oh, we? Well. Right. And don't forget, will you, about getting me fags on your duty-free allowances. And uh, if we haven't met up by the three-mile limit, you'll find me getting ship-shape in the bar, all right? Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, sorry, Pat. Pardon, pardon moi. in ten minutes then, eh, son? On the waves, hour and a bit on the ferry, and then we'll be in France. Yeah, you can sort of sense the atmosphere already, you know? It's kind of like, well, cosmopolitan. <laughs> we have this incredibly effervescent sort of internationalism around the Channel ports, you know? I mean, it's kind of like there's this amorphous aura of polyglot eclecticism, you know? <laughs> no, I don't need these, sir. Uh, can I see your tickets, please? Oh, yes, uh, we are with a vehicle, but it's already gone on board. Yes, sir, but I still need to see your tickets. Our tickets? Oh, no. Oh, no. What is it? Steve's got them. Oh, God. Where are you? Steve! Down here, Steve! Steve! Steve, look here! Hey, hey, Bray. Hey, Sonia. Hey, can you better get on board? It goes in five minutes. No, Steve. The tickets. We haven't got our tickets. Tickets? The tickets. The tickets. It's all right. No, no. They're quite safe. I locked them in the van. <laughs> oh, no. Get them, Steve. Hurry. Come on. We can't get on. Yeah, OK. Right. Yeah, um, yeah don't panic. You stay <laughs> Mind yourself. Bye. I send you a postcard. <laughs> 